Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. And also, welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. All right, we are here. We have a full house if you are watching the Zoom call, which we have something to say about Zoom in just a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you listen to the podcast too, welcome. Uh, we have a full house over here. First of all, I'm going to introduce our guests of honor. Uh, you know them. They are friends to solo co-op community. They drop a bomb every single year, something that makes solo players, co-op players completely and utterly happy and destitute and poor looking for the rest of their stuff. It is Josh and Adam Carlson, the founders of Chip Theory Games. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hello. All Thanks right. for having us. Absolutely. No, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to this. Um, Shannon is in the background. Shannon Wedge also works for Chip Theory Games. Go ahead and pop your head in the, in the window, Shannon, just for a little bit. <laughs> there she is. She's back there. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing us together. Uh, the occasion here is there is a new Kickstarter for mm -hmm. uh, Hoplomachus of uh, Victorium or Victorum? Victorum, yep. Yep. Hoplomachus Victorum, the re reiteration, new fresh coat of paint, fresh mechanisms for Hoplomachus, mm -hmm. the first published chip theory game. We're going to talk all about that. But, but yeah. before we get there, we are going to introduce my wingman for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so a uh, full disclosure, I have not played Hoplomachus. I've played other chip theory games, Cloud Spire and Too Many Bones. And so I enjoy the products. It's just one particular game that I hadn't um, played. However, I wanted to give, uh, use the space to give, you know, chip theory some love because we love the company. We so I needed a, a person who has played Hoplomachus was going to be Liz Davidson, but we're a little bit late because it's a you know teaching night. However, Kevin Erskine has stepped up. Uh, you have seen him in the, on the top 100 solo list. I think that if Chip Theory were to release just a pile of chips and <laughs> as a starter, <laughs> Kevin Erskine would back. <laughs> that's that's game to pick a game, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. That's close to it. <laughs> Super absolutely. Chip Theory Super Backer, Kevin Erskine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. This is the this is the first time that Kevin has interacted with the Carlsons, but he, the, uh, a good friend uh, to Chip Theory since the very beginning, I believe. I've yeah. been back yeah. in the products. Since yeah, the very I've beginning. been there on every Kickstarter. I'm yeah. still looking for my tiger from that first one. The tiger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so as I said before, we are talking about Hoplomachus Victorum. Uh, we're going to get all into that, but before we do that, I wanted to talk about chip theory games in general first, lay some groundwork. So I don't know if you gentlemen remember, but you were on my podcast, Every Night is Game Night, about four years ago, wow. talking, yeah. about, talking about Too Many Bones. It was just announced, first printing, uh, only Ricky Royal had a copy, yep. <laughs> a couple of other yep. people, and you know, we had, it was just, it was a young company, I think it might have been just the two of you at that point Probably uh with some part-time help yeah yeah and here we are now we have shannon in the back you know it's like you know, <laughs> uh, pulling all the strings and we have other people working for the company so please update us like how far chip theory has come in the last four years sure sure well that's yeah it's been a it's been a wild ride i mean we we really when Adam and I started we had no idea where this would all land um you know we were both working uh, jobs we loved, I would say at the time it yeah. was, it was, we were very passionate about what we were doing, but at the same time, we loved spending time breaking down games, rebuilding games, like talking games all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that's, um, so by the way, Josh and I are cousins, a yeah. lot of people see us brothers. We're brothers <laughs> so we, we've grown up we go through, through the years we've been playing, you know, dissecting games and making our own rules and, and whatnot. But yeah. Um, I would say closer to the Harper Marcus time, the time when we really um, decided to try and make a game. Um, we were very busy, you know, we were married, we had, you know, um, our full-time jobs, but we were we were determined to make Harper Marcus. So we worked late at night and we just kind of, it was a, it was a great hobby to have. But yeah, specifically to your question, the last four years, you know, that's four years and something is about when I, switched over to chip theory full time. Yes. You know, that's when chip theory finally had their first employee. And I know for me, 
I was first because I, uh, uh, well, I had a, an entry level job. I was working at school. I loved what I did, but it was very easy for, for me to make the switch. And Josh, uh, very skilled, and he had a great job. It was a little harder decision to try to make that that transition, but it was kind of a big decision. So, mm -hmm. and he was, you were just a few months after me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at that point, we felt like, wow, this is, this is real, this is happening. Yeah. And so, yeah, and that was just four years and change ago when it was just the two of us. Yeah. And it was a slower ramp up. Like we, you know, Bones definitely had that, it, it really started us off um, on that track. Uh, Hoplomachus was, was a bunch of time figuring out the space, figuring out Kickstarter, figuring out a, a lot of things. <laughs> and, and it was very much like uh, us doing everything ourselves and yeah. doing, you know, as much as we, we could to get by it with regard to like, you know, like uh, art that is open source art and all, all yeah. of that stuff. So yeah, just a public domain art, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Hopper Marcus very much was just, us too and it was yeah the public domain the mm -hmm. your graphic skills which were great but you know no um, no. Well, <laughs> no that's we why we're doing it, <laughs> doing it so. exactly but it, it, it was it's the other job yeah it got and, us by it got us by yeah yeah and so right. yeah so i mean what two and now four years later we're we're nearing 20 employees and wow we're into a wow. Space. wow and uh <laughs> it's 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 crazy yeah big yeah. old boots at, at uh at, i went to your booth at pax unplugged giant yeah. big displays of everything it's unbelievable <laughs> what you guys have built in the last four years yeah thank you yeah it's exciting and and like just the the fact that we're able to to keep designing I, like i'm i'm just so pleased with that like a lot of times and and it has been a, a struggle to stay on that line for both of us you know with with a company that we're actually you know that you have to run you tend to get pulled in so many different directions and that's probably one of our biggest challenges but but so we've set up adam in a very specific way to be able to kind of hard line design and then I'm kind of designing as I'm helping run the company. And so like mm. we both have our hands in it and that's really, I wasn't sure how much we would be able to do that, mm. you know, by this point in time, obviously we have a lot of, of opportunity to speak into design, but how much we can really wrangle it is, sure. is still yeah. waiting to be seen, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, chime in anytime, Kevin, uh, by the way, if you have any questions about the, the, the company in general, because I'm about to turn to Hoplomachus. So do you have any questions about okay. uh, chip theory? Yeah, and so, was, so when you guys quit your regular jobs, was that after Too Many Bones came out and, and hit, like the first Kickstarter of Too Many Bones? Um, Adam, Adam was a little bit before that and like prep on the precipice of Bones, right? Was it? Did so we after launch... funding, yeah. After part, it was before we fulfilled the yep. Bones campaign. Yep. Um, because we realized um, after the campaign, you've been doing the pledge manager or something like that. We used a pledge manager for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that as the pre-order sales came in that we really had something on our hand and, right. and we couldn't keep up with just yeah. the two of us. So we needed to bring in some extra help or I could just make the transition and see how it goes. Yeah, but we did wait and see, Kevin. Like we, we, the we were able finish. to assess that we felt like we could probably cover some kind of salary for the for the two of us with, yeah. with the results so yeah. it wasn't like a total leap of faith there was I mean, there's yeah. plenty of risk there but yeah yeah, yeah i guess it, <laughs> yeah i guess if, if you'd have quit before the kickstarter that right that would that's <laughs> a leap of another faith. level <laughs> another level yeah right yeah, so that's 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 line. amazing. I mean, from then, you know, just uh, Josh and Adam and a wing and a prayer, and then you know, twenty companies later, we just had Christopher Beldell on, who has this, a similar story for Sentinels of the Multiverse. So it's fun. It's fun to kind of watch the evolution of the industry sure. in the sense sure. that you know, you have these these companies that become giant companies and it's like, yeah. oh my goodness, you know, we're going to get taken over by the asthma days and everything. But then there's that other part of the story. Smaller companies, just yeah. one or two people grow into 20 people and who knows, yeah. you know, what's going to happen. I mean, uh, so we can talk about that a little bit, but we're here to do the hype. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> because Hoplomachus <laughs> is an important part of the Chips Theory story. It is, I, I believe it was the first kick, not your first designed game, at least, you know, in terms of work, but it was your first uh brought to market type game wasn't it yeah yep yeah it was i mean we had we had plenty of ideas before then 
Uh, but it was, this was the first one that we saw through to completion. And, you know, we still have idea docs out there that are, that are, that go back to those days that have never been developed. But, but uh, yeah, that Haplo was, was the very first one that we saw all the way through. But I think, I mean, the biggest thing about, uh, and what's so cool to come all full circle for, for me personally, was just that in the days of original Hoplo, like it was days of winging it. Like it was, we just didn't, I mean, we had both, we both had experience. I had, a, I had a fair amount of business experience, but as far as like in this space, we were winging it and we were like, we, you have to be willing to just try something and make mistakes. And I think at the time, especially Kickstarter was perfect for that. Like now it, the, 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 the whole medium has changed a little bit, but like at that time, it allowed you to basically say, I, I, we have an idea, you know, and, you know, I still crack up when I look at our initial Kickstarter video and it's the two of us in a makeshift like apartment yeah. room that was like a renovated barn that my dad, had, you know, like, and it was like, it was a room that, that, and we stacked up the, the pathetic amount of games that I had you know, I owned at the time, which was like five games. And we tried to make a game (laughs) shelf, but behind (laughs) us, you know, it was just like everything about it was wrong, but like, but it was too, you know, but we had an idea and it was an (laughs) idea that we were passionate about. And that came through at least to 240 backers. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it worked. It allowed us to, to build on something. And so a bunch of mistakes, but a bunch of, you know, small decisions that now, we can build on and that's yeah so now to be able to come around and actually tackle it with a lot of professionally you know trained people that we've hired you know to actually back up yeah. all of our ideas it's so exciting so yeah yeah i'll just say that when we started out with our first half of Minecraft game i know we were both in the mindset of just this was going to be a hobby that will be able to you know achieve our dream of making a board game and hopefully have uh, a few dozen people enjoy playing the same game that we made. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever even doing that. It would eventually become a company, uh, a sustaining thing yeah. in any way, shape, or form. I think yeah. that, um, but after, you know, the second and third half of Marcus Game Show, we started <laughs> to think, ooh, you know, that would be nice to, to you know, keep making games because we want to do this. And I know that there was a, a period of time in there several years of just you know working full time we had our families and then the late night work um developing these games it started to feel a lot more like work um by the time that third half of Marcus game came around and so the bones uh breakthrough was a, a huge huge um yeah deal for yeah. us yeah right. yeah and that was the first one that we were using you know anthony's artwork with and so that's mm. that maybe speaks a little bit to the interest level that you know people were able to like um encounter bones in a different way than they were able to engage with the public domain art of of hoplomachus original and so you know for for me that's also very exciting is to now kind of now that we have a brand, now that we've worked, you know, seven years on building that brand and shaping it into what it is, we can make it that game again, you know, and it fits that brand. Whereas it, originally we were figuring out that identity. And so it, it doesn't, you know, it didn't really play in or hit on all cylinders the first time, even though the mechanics were there and it's a really good, uh, well, we, we feel like it's a really good game. Otherwise we wouldn't be remaking it, but um, but now well, it's, it's a good game. To have it. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. The public has spoken. <laughs> it's at least a good game. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, Kevin, do you yeah. remember that a very original project? Oh, absolutely. I, in, I remember in the t- room and all that. As a backer, like you're not. This isn't your first rodeo. You like the you know the dungeon crawls. What did you think when because you had no context for it? No, but that was probably one of my first Kickstarters that I backed. Sure. So I don't, I don't know that I noticed the video so much. I, I do remember teasing you guys. I think it was after about the Origins one that <laughs> it's no fun because it's not coming down to the wire anymore. Like that, that first <laughs> right. one was, that first one was close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. I mean, we had, and we didn't even know the like we were we were studying. I remember still studying the rules of Kickstarter to begin with. Like we were like, all right. <laughs> How many, how close, how close of we, can we get to relatives? Like if I call, uh, you know, my dad and say, Hey, 
you got to back us for two grand to take us over the top. You know, like, yeah. I don't know if I can get him to do that, but can we do that? <laughs> you know, like we just really, really, really wanted to fund. And yeah, it was down to the wire. I mean, and that's kind of where the whole strategist pledge came from. Do we have that on the very first Kickstarter? Did we have strategist or so, was that introduced? with? Yeah. Ideas? So super bizarre thing. Uh, we never did any pre-marketing homework whatsoever. When we created the game, we created the video, we adjusted all yeah. of that. But when we hit go, I remember you were at my place and we were like, should we, should we launch now? Okay, let's launch now. And then we hit go. <laughs> and it was, it was within that first hour that we had that, it was $1,500. Mm, yes. $1,550 yes. backer. No joke. Uh, strategist mm -hmm. or something or other. Mm -hmm. um, and we were like blown away. It was like, yeah, wow, because because at the time Kickstarter would take the average of the day and it was the last yeah. hour of the day and it put us up on the chart. On the what's hot it, list so, or whatever it was because of that little boost in funding. And I remember we were very, you know, we reached out to the person directly. We were like, we're not even waiting. We just sent a message and yeah. started going back and forth. And, but I don't think that that, I hope, yeah. I want to say thank you to that backer because I mm -hmm. think that that first initial investment meant a whole lot more and it gave us that start that we needed to actually get Harper mm -hmm. Marcus and ultimately Trip Theory Games going. Yeah. Like it's wow. crazy how some of those smaller details they have to happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That was one of those moments. Yep. Yeah. Now, now your strategist, you can put 10 of them up and they're gone in the first five yeah. seconds. Yeah, mm, it's it's insane. Well, it, it's what funny exactly to, is the strategist pledge? I'm sorry. What exactly is the strategist? Oh, pledge? oh. So the strategist pledge was something that we came up with early on, just as a as a way of infusing the campaign with what Adam was describing, like a little bit of uh, of funding. Obviously, early on, that was really important to us. But it was it was a way for us to say, hey, you, you like. Kickstarter's rules are very strict. Like you can't sell a, a portion of your, you know, company or anything like that. But we were able to say, hey, for X amount of money, we will send you uh, ongoing every, game. every game that we make and and fund on Kickstarter from from start to wow. to finish. And so, and yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, early on, that was a great risk to the backer. You know, right, they, right, right. You know, they right. were putting their trust and faith in us, and you know, they really liked maybe Josh and I, or maybe they liked Papa Marcus, but a combination of the two. And they like we chips. really appreciate they, they love that. chips. But, yeah, the chips, right? Yeah, that's probably sure. more. But that yeah. initial bit of cash actually was super important for us yeah. to have that extra funding to get us to Gen Con. Yeah. So that was yeah. the first year we were able to attend Gen Con, and we. And I remember, like yesterday, we walked in with games in each arm, and we just sat on a random table, and we did the, the whole, I mean, we were learning as we go. But that's another one of those key details that, I mean, we met a few yeah. key people there, and they helped us kind of. I think that's where it really became real to me how, like, personable and how willing the community, this community is. And it, it, it's a little different than any other business community that I've been in. Um, and it was like, all of a sudden we had two, three, four people who were, I mean, at their time, at the time, influencers in the, in the gaming community. And they were, they were helping us, you know, become known. And that was, that was huge. Like we, we wouldn't have had anywhere near the success. And I remember Tim Norris, like just bellowing out in yeah. Gen Con, you know, the, the Hapumakis, what is Hapumakis yeah. for us as we walk along like, and pointing them to our table. And right. So, yeah, just another yeah. one of those guys, yeah. right? We cut in Jersey, opened up his house. Yeah. Yep. We stayed yep. in his basement, I think it was. So, I mean, it was like all of those little things yeah. that it yeah. really helped us get to Gen Con and be a part of it and meet people. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is, this is, we are shelf stories. This is a, this is an amazing story. Yeah. Like uh, of like the, the twists and the turns and the, the hair, <laughs> the making it by a hair and having the, the key funding at the right time and back and then the funding right at the end. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, with this game, 
right? With Hoplomachus. And right, so, right. you know, now we come to fast forward today. We're looking at yep. Josh and Adam in the Sanctum Sanctorum over there, like a nice <laughs> little, <laughs> and I see three versions of Hoplomachus back there. I see Hoplomachus, the lost cities and origins. And, you know, the, the mm -hmm. design right, was, from. was, was put into there. There's a lot of, um, yeah. you know, iteration that went on with Hoplomachus and yeah. eventually became kind of its own system, right? It's own like, yep. okay, this is the yep. corpus of Hoplomachus. Yep. So then now we've arrived at Victorum, which is the decision to reboot. Yep. Right. Yep. Is that what, is that the word that you would use internally as like a reboot <laughs> of the system? Yeah. So there's two parts to it. So obviously the Kickstarter, we don't want to go in with a mixed message. The, 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 the original idea was, do we want to remake anything? But also, was, we were asking the question, do we want to make a solo-only board game? And what, what do we want to do with that? And it just, those two kind of came together really quickly. And we were like, well, obviously, Haplo is, is it. Like, that's, it's, it's been received so well. It's got this community and fan base behind it. But it, it never really had its chance in the sun. And so, like, let's, let's do that for it. But also lean heavily into this whole concept that is is very much us too. Like we, we, we didn't set out to be a like solo first board game company, right. but at the same time, it, it really just happened. It happened organically. Like we just, that was important to us. And I don't even know that we knew so specifically that that was its own thing. Right. It just was like, well, should we be able to play this on our own? Yeah. 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 We should let's design it this way, you know? And so we kind of just did it that way from the beginning and it became a thing and there were games out there that obviously were solo, you know, solo only games. Yeah. yeah. But very, very few um, at the right. at the time. And nothing we... with the production value. That no, you had right. To it. Right. So, yeah, no, that's Victory Point, point Games was, that was lagging behind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Lost Cities, the first game, you know, it had the solo and cooperative aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was, there was a whole lot of meat to the solo, but I managed right. definitely. It's there. Mm -hmm. um, but that was when we met Ricky Royal. Mm -hmm. And Ricky Royal, and we got to talking, and then he basically lit the fire under us. Like, we got to really work the solo side of things, too. So Rise of Rome, and especially Origins, yeah. really leaned heavy yeah. into the solo aspect. And I mm -hmm. think that that really allowed us to participate and, and be a part of the, the solo community and grow that. and, and be a yeah. part of it, you know, and I think that we loved leaning that direction and we loved making the solo bits of Haplo. So yeah. after, you know, when Too Many Bones came to be, it just kind of, it felt right to yeah. do the solo and co-op style of game. So you're making yeah. Kevin happy right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, yeah, I mean, so then back to the question, it, it's, it is really two parts. The, and probably the, the heavier part or the one that we want to take up the most time with, um, certainly the campaign is built around Victorum. And that is the solo only board game that is, is you know, designed for, for one player and that's it. And it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's getting the chip theory games treatment, you know, and that is, that is really exciting. Is, I mean, stuff like, be, stuff like this yeah. stadium seating is, is going right in the game. So um, that's for like, we started with our chip trays and then we were like, you know what, how do we make these more epic? Because you are the captive audience of, you know, of this game. And and it's, it doesn't have to pander to anyone else at the table. So how do we make that feel even more like, like it's all about you? And, uh, and so we've got this stadium seating where all the gladiators are kind of spectating all of these arena battles. And, you know, we had how many arenas in Origins? <laughs> so we had three. Three, so three, three arenas in Origins. So, and now... It's like, let's Eight. add a few more and I mean, let's make an arena like, for every single faction we come out with Origins. So and yeah. then, you know what? Seven, that that's makes sense. right? Let's make it eight. <laughs> so then we made, so now we have eight yeah. small arenas and each one of them feels like its own separate game. It's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, there's, the, that is the, that is the star, certainly. And there's, um, but I think the other thing that proved out with Bones 
uh, for us as the series kept getting bigger and bigger was just that everything we wanted everything to work together. So um, it, the, the, the ability to, to be able to buy a gear lock and play any of the content that you can with that one gear lock it is extremely valuable to um, the customer, but also to, to us to have that working so well within the series. And so like remaking Hoplo because of all of the people out there that love the, the, the content that we have was important to us as well. And then allowing that content to be worked into or vice versa to an extent, like was also important. So if so you're gonna end up with all of this Hoplo content, we want it to be working together. Um, I've really enjoyed, you know, kind of reminiscing a bit and all of the original stuff and then kind of giving it uh, a little bit of a gentle treatment rematch. It really hasn't been changed all that much other than, you know, the polishing mm -hmm. of the rule book, mm -hmm. the art, and some of the units have been just massaged a little bit to, to feel a little bit more um, right, I guess. You know, they kind of synergize a little better. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that going through it again um, makes it, it, it felt right. Mm -hmm. um, Victorum being all new, that's where the vast majority of my time has been. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, to, to speak to your point about the remastered, um, it's been really special because, you know, this is our original stuff as well. And I think that remaster is going to be, it's going to have a special place in Josh and I's heart. Mm -hmm. And we're mm -hmm. just going to make sure that we still push that product in addition to Victorian. We want all of the players who want to play co-op, if they want to play versus mode, absolutely remastered is just right for them. And the Victorian, the compatibility you were saying, all of the units in Victorian are going to be able to be used in the remastered for versus play, for cooperative play, and vice versa. So like I, I would like to present it as, you know, it's two big box games. <laughs> and no matter which you play, the other one serves as a strong supporting add-on mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that we're able to show that just right. Yeah. Yeah. So just and to be I, clear, and actually, I'd like to interject for a second. Just yeah, to be please. clear from a consumer perspective. And the, I got Kevin right over here. He has every hoplo. He has all the uh, everything. Speaking for my man over here, how much is he going to be able to use his old stuff? Rise of Rome, Origins, and um, uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Rise of, uh, the original is the Lost Cities. The Lost Cities. So yeah. how much of that stuff is going to be able to be transferable to the new product? So or great question. Zero. 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 That's like, it. That is zero. It, and it, and it, it's, <laughs> it's done on purpose because like, I already knew that. Yeah. Yeah. It's done on purpose because everything is getting an overhaul in terms of art, in terms of how it works. Um, not not so much in the actual gameplay mechanics, like Hoplo is strong in that in that area. And, and Victorum will lean into what people are familiar with, with that. Like when you play the arenas of Victorum, it's gonna feel like what you know Hoplo to be as far as the battles go. But there's a whole nother aspect to it, which is the build, the squad building, building your, your entire team of gladiators tactics that you then travel the, the world. And, and so like the, that's a really cool aspect. With the remastered, what we're trying to do there is we got really aggressive with, I mean, there's how much content? There's like 200, $250 worth of, of game that we're trying to In wrangle into one box and not make it overwhelming for the player um, the new but, players, yes. yeah, the new players certainly, but and then, but then also just have it be oozing with content, you know that, and, and I think that that we're doing it. Like it's exciting so to see funny, that we're you know compacting all that yeah. into, uh, yeah. So like I double sided neoprene yeah. and stuff like that, whereas before it was an, an individual one. Yeah. I mean, that's that saves us a nice chunk of money to be able to do that. So stuff like that. Yep. 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 That's all. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll, bring, I'll bring Kevin in here because you are a backer of the old, you have all the old stuff and you spend all your money on it. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that there's a, a, a you know, we, we went through question. this with, yeah. 
We yeah. went through this well, with Sentinels because, you know, Sentinels also yeah. rebooted and that, that was a difficult question as well. There's that whole thing of like, oh, man, I've, I've you know, money, is I, this a money grab? Is this, this a, So, like, walk us through your feelings, Kevin, when you well, found out that Victorum was coming. Yeah, yeah, I never thought I never thought for Sentinels or this that it's a money grab, but it hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of <laughs> yeah. course. It's, yeah. And, you know, and what, it, what it's going to come down to is like it, if I get if I don't get the remastered but just get victorum am i missing a lot or you know no you'd be able to play your entire set and that's you know that's gonna like satiate that that competitive play aspect to hoplo i mean that's that's why you have it all is because that is already working um if you want a a revised version that has brand new art and that has you know a, a more updated feel to it across the board then there, there will be people that, you know, go for that and right. that are the previous owners, but if that's, but the cool thing is, and that's why we think Victorum is such an important part to lead with is because that is flat out new. It's right. new. It's going to, it's going to be there for everyone. The remaster is the way I want to treat it. It's, it, it's not a, both of these things at the top of the Kickstarter um, it's and uh, like the, the remake of, and all of that, it's, it's literally an add on that's down the page at the remaster is. And, and I just, I think it's important to lead with the fact that this is a brand new game, um, but it's, and it's getting our treatment, but yes, we are remaking that for those that maybe aren't all in yet or are all in and love it so much that they right. are willing. To. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I don't, I don't see my, I don't see myself buying the remastered because I've got everything already. It, it, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I've got more games than I can play. So the last thing I need is to buy two of the same game. And right. it's the same thing with, with Sentinels Definitive Edition. I wouldn't. Yep. I just what I've got, I enjoy. Right. And you know, and so you, I know some people will get it. Some people will trade it. I, I think coming off of too many bones and cloud spire and these other games, I think you're going to get a lot of new people yeah. who are going to say, yeah. well, what's next? And, and right. just get what's next. Kind of like, you know, I've been buying stuff all along because everything yeah. you guys produce is great. So I think Thank you. The, the tremendous number of people you have back and now will, will get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, I mean, the, the chips, the mats and everything it can't be cheap. So yeah. to say, Hey, we'll upgrade your product. Well, <laughs> it doesn't leave a whole lot. I mean, there's not visual yeah. cards in that game that you can say, well, we'll leave those alone. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I get it from a business yeah. point of view, I get it. For, and I'm not a completionist. I don't, you know, some people will probably be really mad. Um, you know, and I look at it and said, you know, I, I paid X amount of money for Hoplomachus and I've got, way way more of my money's worth out of it yeah um so i'm fine and and yeah you know i, I probably will get victorum and and move yeah. on and yeah. i don't i don't i don't feel like i got cheated by any stretch because i've had the top low for what was that 2012 or something yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean i had that almost a decade um yeah. So it's not like I feel crazy to think about almost a decade. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember when the Thunderstorm Stone came out. They came out with a new version the next year, and it's like, wow. okay, no, that's a Thunderstorm Advance. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was right after, and you know, now there's a third one or something. And it's like, you know, asking people to, especially if you're going to continue a series and you're asking people to buy what you've buy replace what you've already got so that you can keep going forward yeah like jason pandemic i never bought anything other than the original pandemic once they said we're going to redo it and come back i'm like i'm out yeah you know and well, but but the fact that i can play victorum without buying everything again yeah that works for me that works for me that's cool yeah um thank you for sharing uh kevin i i appreciate your thoughts and you know i want to be sensitive to that you know it's it's you know i i just wanted to share also you know the, the number of people that have proper markets i don't think people realize how <laughs> few copies actually were yeah. made you know it's a fraction of the number of bones copies that are out in circulation yeah. right now and so to be able to try and craft an, an all new product around uh, a few thousand copies that are out there we just wanted to make sure we didn't the first thing we wanted to make sure we did was not make concessions just to make it compatible, you know. Right. 
Um, another thing, though, and I say this with a um, take it with a grain of salt, but um, maybe that's not the right way of saying it. But, <laughs> so I would like to say that it's compatible, ish, but it's a, it's it's the message we want to be clear about is just to say it's not compatible, and then hopefully those that own the original will be pleasantly surprised just how close it is. Maybe that's the yeah. right way of putting it. There are slight revisions. It's still 95% similar. Um, in fact, you could even download you know, the new PDF of the new remastered rules and apply that to your originals like you're already, sure. you know, some of that stuff is already there. I, I wouldn't be surprised by the number of people that will try and house rule a few things to make the originals work as well. So I'm just, yeah, yeah. just hang on to that thought for a little bit yeah. longer. And But we just don't want to tell everybody it's compatible, but no. only somewhat, you know? Yeah, no. So, it, right. I, like you said up front, you, you don't want a mixed message. Yeah. So right. you want to be clear, which which I'm great with that. And yeah. and it's it's a solo game, so I can take my stuff and I can play it. And if I've got units that are kind of different and kind of overpowered and I win easy, but I'm having fun, then who cares? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, so one of the things that's rule you know, lots of stuff. Yeah. I think you know it's important that now that we have like a writer on staff, now that we have, you know a full-time illustrator now that we have like all of these things we we it would be negligent of us to not be using that and and like building into the original even as much as we can so like the i i just remember us coming up with the uh, original um you know factions or whatever yeah. and and how how again off the cuff that was yeah. for us and just uh now there's there, there's a lot of thought research that goes into that a backstory that's being written you know like all of that uh that leads up to the relaunch of um these races and cultures and and it's uh it's really fascinating to and fun to be a part of that and so there it's it's going to be rich and it's going to be rich that you know from a story standpoint that i'm hoping will i mean Certainly there's, you know, I don't think we're at least right now planning to do a full on lore book or anything like that for this, but, but, uh, but certainly the original was like, Hey, these civilizations wind up at Rome's doorstep and they don't know what they are. And I, I mean, it was like, I could tell the whole thing in like three sentences and it's yeah. so, so, so much more than that. So, um, so yeah, I think that I'm excited about both products, but certainly Victorum is going to be the, the, the star of the show. Yeah, I, so. you know, I, I've asked you before about the, the video game Gladius. And you yeah. said you, you did play it. Oh my and goodness, I thought yeah. of that where that, you know, there's a story sort of, and, and you're building your team and you're, you know, that's what I kind of hope in the Victorum is. Yes. Is that yes. more of more like that than just one-off battles. Yeah. In fact, there was, a, there's still a lot of, um, inspiration coming from Gladius. Uh, I don't know how many times we've tried to go and like find a ROM from that, from that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, I have my PlayStation 2 set up with Gladius at home right now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll, I'll be over. To, to fill in the people uh, in case somebody doesn't know what Gladius is. Um, so it, it, PlayStation 2, PlayStation Two. Gladius. What is Gladius? It was it was a, a gladiator game, obviously, but it, you were roaming around with a team. You were building your squad. Oh, you were gladiators. recruiting gladiators, um, but they were often gladiators that you were coming in contact with from these different arenas. So if you're if you come and it had a fantasy of a, a, a major fantasy twist yeah. to it, a mythological twist to it. So like you'd you'd wind up and you'd be fighting against minotaurs and stuff like that. But then you're also kind of excited because while you're going to get, you know, leveled by these guys, you're also potentially going to be able to recruit them. So, like, you you take that. That was it. And, I mean, you, you treated, you had a little team, yeah. uh, a Ludish, a Sunshine, mm -hmm. and you had your leading hero, if you will, and you were recruiting yeah. and letting go of gladiators as you traveled through this, this world. This is very similar to uh, Victorian, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, the whole idea of managing your own little team and trying to grow them into or trying to craft a certain team that will be suitable for 
your future opponents. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gladius very much is that way. Yeah. Um, one thing about Gladius, though, was very interesting is, is all the tactical component on a board. They didn't really have a very large board. It was larger than, I would say it's about comparable to mm -hmm. the Lost Cities and Rise of Rome boards in terms of number of hexes. Mm -hmm. um, um, so yeah. larger than Origins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. But it was very tactical, and you know they had some sort of elevation element which we built into Origins, and and we have that for Victorum as well. Uh, one of the things for PlayStation though was it was, I don't know if it qualifies as a dexterity game, but you had the key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, buttons, that's not a part so of Victorum. Obviously, no. <laughs> we didn't incorporate that. Yeah. There's no button, and I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but but I will say, when I sat down and played one of the arenas uh, from Victorum, and uh, like it was such a fun experience to be like, okay, you know, I, I'm very familiar with and like the the arenas that we have, but now we've got these new aspects where like you're you're chained up together, and you're you're having to pivot on each other because you can only do you can only like move in certain ways when you're chained or linked to your partner. And like, there's, and at first I was like, I don't know how, how I feel about this. And then what, like two turns in, I was already just like, just soaking in the, the strategy aspect of like, how am I going to plan my moves? And when am I going to make that big swing around to, you know, pick up a weapon on my way past so that I can then move this direction with the help of my partner? Or when am I going to, you know, like, there's so many different little aspects that I, I can't wait for us to, like, reveal to people during the Kickstarter. So. And you, and you said the arenas are all the size of Origins? Yeah, they're very similar to Origins. They have the the hexes, the number of hexes differ from re, from arena to re, arena and certainly their their composition, but they're all they all fit within that like about a 12 inch by 12 inch play mat. So the, they're meant to be fairly quick battles like Origins battles, mm -hmm. but there are certain ones that unlike origins are drawn out a little bit and that's just in the way that the deployment works and, and whatnot there's a there's so yeah it's sure. yeah there's there's a fair amount of of difference between like because sometimes you're fighting with two versus two and that's it like that's and yeah the battle is boom so there's it's, a lot it's, of yeah it's quick one of the things that is different than origins and different than gladius even is the sport aspect that we're incorporating into the game mm -hmm. Um, up till now, all of Hypermarcus has really just been, been about defeating gladiators, and it's all about removing the health chips and defeating and defeating. Victorum adds a new twist where uh, many of the combats are actually going to be um, almost like competition where you have to go grab the flag from the other side of the arena mm -hmm. and bring it around back to your side. So you have to kind of position gladiators to block or intercept or, you know, you have a tactician that you might want to use as the guy to go for that run is to get up. Right. So um, like it's it's really bringing the, in like World of Warcraft, Overwatch type, you know, different modes yes. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we have a uh, uh, King of the Hill, yes. which is very much like a World of Warcraft where you're kind of standing in the same area and kind of, what do you call it? Uh, um, what is the ask? What is the what was the term they used in World of Warcraft? Um, yeah, capture the flag. Like no, no the, the other one, King, uh, of the the King of the Hill. It was like uh, area control. Okay, yeah. effect, so sure. there is an area control aspect in Victorian as well. Um, but the trick for both of capture the flag and the King of the Hill is that you are not allowed to defeat their units. Um, completely otherwise you're prematurely ending the, the competition right so it's, it's a spectacle for the audience you can't just like take people out right, yeah right right exactly yep. yeah yeah so, what, what i think is really interesting about the sport battles um versus the lethal are they are granting you different types of rewards so you're uh, from from winning a sport battle you're building and recruiting further gladiators from winning a lethal battle you're actually improving your hero specifically. And both are gonna be critically important later on. Like if you just focus on sport battles, your gladiators will never get like removed after a sport battle. If you if your gladiator like is knocked out of a sport battle, they're they're not like they're not dead. Yeah. So you get them back. 
in lethal battles, any gladiators that are lost, they're not coming back to your team. So there's, there's, there's a lot of risk in the lethal battles, but at the same time, you're only improving your hero and eventually you will have no gladiators left to fight with. And right. the minute your hero is gone, the game's over. So like there's, there's a really cool yeah. juxtaposition the between the two. The is where you're building for a long time, but yeah. you need to thread the line of making sure you have a healthy enough team and the right yeah. competition. So you're finding yourself kind of hopping back and forth between lethal and sport, but you have to do it in, at the pace that you want. And that's where the, the whole mapping dynamic that we have in the game, you don't exactly have full control over, well, I want the next one to be sport. You kind of have to eyeball, you know, the next few weeks and where your next two or three or four stops are going to be and yeah. try and plan as best you can in terms of how that works. So there's the constant struggle of, you know, how, how do you optimize the growth mm-hmm. of your long term? Yeah. And yeah, you'll often find yourself kind of in a position where, well, I don't really want to do this because I, the reward doesn't help me. I have a full team, so I'm going to spectate the fight. And that's the other aspect we haven't really touched on is very much a part of this game, um, in addition to all the battles we just talked about, is your need to spectate which was basically just watching the fight and moving on to the next one. And that the concept is that no time will pass as you're just passing through. And that's important because there's the, the time. The time is the, it's the whole game. It's a race against time to get to the end. So mm-hmm. choosing which ones to spectate because A, the battles are too tough, or B, maybe the rewards aren't where you know, you're not ready for them or, you know, it could be a number of different things. So love that struggle and strategy. Nice. Yep. Nice. Is there a culmination point? Does the, does the, does Victorum kind of like end in a grand finale or is it like I reach max level type thing? Yeah. So there's, there's a number of heroes and whichever hero you choose to play, um, the other heroes become your opponents. So those are, we've, we've got them designed in such a way where they flip over and they actually have stats that are going to compete against you in the Primus battles. So Primus battles happen at the end of, of the first three sessions. And those, that's kind of an initial culmination. Maybe kind of you could see it as like a mini boss. Um, and you're trying to take out three Primus uh, battles or win three Primus battles, and then you're able to fight the Scion at the end of the fourth session. So you can break those up. You can do all four sessions if you want in one sitting, or you break those up. Typically, you'd break those up and you know play an hour and a half session or something like that and be done with one session. Um, and then you pack the game up. And that's yeah. that's another aspect that we're really working on is that that quick quick in, quick out in terms of setup um, so that you can move back into your next session really yeah. easily, easily. Yeah, so um, one thing we didn't mention yet is this is really a campaign style game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a mm-hmm. long, long game. This is, you know, eight hours. This is, you know, six to eight hour game broken up into four separate game sessions. Yep. And so that was the, uh, that's where that comes mm-hmm. in. So mm-hmm. if you want to sit down and just play for 90 minutes, great. Play through the first Primus, and then we've got the quick save feature to put it back in the box. Um, but yeah, so it's a campaign style game. It is loaded with content. And I'm telling you, this whole campaign, <laughs> you're playing as one hero, and you choose one fire. And there are so many different combinations, possibilities yeah. and options. It's going to be mind-boggling. So well, it's just like in Bones, like you I mean in, in Bones, you could just like <laughs> you can play the short campaign, yeah. you can play the longer campaign, you could like yeah. you know, and you could just like dip in over and over and over. So like mm-hmm. I mean, you, you guys have a lane. <laughs> we do, we do, good and bad to that, but yeah, I mean, I think mostly good. Like no, it's, in, in the best way, like, like I mean, games, they find yeah. us, you know. So in, yeah. in the best way, like you know that, and in in a way, it's funny that you guys like drifted towards solo because that's what we want, right? 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 That's what so solo we want depth and yeah. we want depth in mechanism and depth in, in imaginative immersion yeah. and it just it seems like that's as personality you, you drift that way in terms of yeah. like depth of your design and it just kind of seemed to marry together really well yeah cool cool, so cool. Be- between all the fights in the victorum are there like events or other things that happen or yeah. is it 
fight to fight or what? Um, so that's a great question. You're usually moving. So there's a third deck that we haven't mentioned, which was you've got your, your sporting events that are, and then you have your lethal events Then you have opportunities. And those opportunities are you, you bypass, you know, people on the road or they're, they're more of a, like a kind of a quest. You could look at it that way, I guess, but it's, it's a, it's a situation that's presented to you that you can, you can keep with you and, can, and like try to see it through. Maybe it's getting to a certain, certain region and doing a certain thing. Maybe it's impressing one of the, you, you meet someone that's a gladiator that you need to impress at a certain level in order for them to actually fight for you. And so you're trying to not take a hit in, in an event and you, you have to take this guy along with you if, you know, for as long as you, you want in order to uh, impress them. But if you never end up impressing them, like you're, t they're taking up a spot potentially on your roster. And so like, there's, there's some really interesting aspects to the opportunities that, will allow you to um, ultimately when you complete them, you're, you're improving your hero's prowess. And yeah. that's one of the main things. And then also potentially removing some of the banes. Yeah. So you're like, again, you asked about the final, like <laughs> Pluto is your final, like you, you're fighting one of their, his, his scions um, at the very, very end. And so that's at the end, end of the fourth session. So, yeah, I mean, that's what this is all about. And when you're uh, spectating battles, uh, while that helps you in a way, in a number of ways, it also can hurt you because you're accumulating uh, yeah. veins. So. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's well put. Uh, the whole Pluto, you know, Ryan, our, our writer, would do a better, he'll do a great job telling the story of the, the premise, the backstory <laughs> of the whole thing. But um, ultimately, um, this whole game takes place in 78, 79 AD before Mount Vesuvius erupts. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea is we're trying to complete the challenges that have been laid out before us mm -hmm. uh, across the seven scions, or however many scions, sorry. Um, and after doing that story-wise, we basically saved humanity mm -hmm. by stopping mm -hmm. Pluto from erupting um, Vesuvius. Yep. So yep. anyways, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So, and then, so you said you can improve the heroes. I assume the, the rest of the gladiators don't improve because they're chips. They just stay the same, right? And then, what, yeah. Did you say there, there's yep. weapons? So there are, there are weapons uh, in form of, like there's one arena that you can pick up okay. um, extra weapon dice, right. basically. Uh, right now and then um, yeah improving of your gladiators there are a number of ways to do that not just changing out gladiators but there are, they do get at this point better in not not the individual gladiator but like the basic to uh, so region specific gladiators there are some very subtle you know uses of equipment or weapons or yeah. um, they're kind of hidden in there among the tactics the weapons right now appear as attack dice. Mm -hmm. We do have some great big plans and ideas for down the road in terms of um, expanding into an area of um, something in that area. But right now, it's we try to keep Victorium, you know, it's, it's as vast as it is. We still wanted to try and keep it as streamlined and simple as possible in many right. areas. So yeah. I think yeah. you'll see, yeah. Yeah, okay, what so I was then, wondering is like, yeah. do you have, um, you know, if you have gladiator chips and it's like, if they win, you know, they're, if they, if they're part of three winning battles, you flip them over and now they're a little stronger or something like that. You right. don't do that. Right. Nope. Nope. Right okay. now. That's not, yeah, that's not in there. Oh, okay. No. And then how many heroes to start with? Um, seven. Oh, wow. Seven different, seven different it's heroes. Yes. That's seven. Seven. So you had to so, count yeah. because. Uh, there's some pl there's some structural yeah there's a lot of that structural lined structural that well, yeah, sure. but we are so each faction does start with its own hero mm -hmm. so for each arena each home region they will feature their hero that you get to play as so that's super exciting because you know the first quarter of the game is it takes place in your own home region. And there are some interesting dynamics about that as well. And so I think we've done a good job making each of the heroes feel different, mm -hmm. unique, 
dynamic enough, especially with the prowesses. The prowesses are those, I don't want to call them, you know, skills, like too many bounds, but, but the prowesses are unique um, for the most part to that particular hero. Yeah. So leaning into and unlocking, earning those prowesses is how you're really going to uh, yeah. set yourself apart from yeah. the other heroes. Yeah. yeah. So, so do we get an Ursula and a Ludo hero? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll leave that That's from be, Thaddeus, to be Jesus. revealed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's. Uh, we'll, we'll, so this is awesome. It's get, it's getting you know obviously you know getting that's the whole point right getting us fired fired up and what's happening that your passion is clearly coming through for the project. Um, let's just let's round things out with the future. So yeah. I mean, this is the be this is the there was a beginning and now this is a new beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And I, it, so is the intention, you know, chip theory mostly sells from its website, right? Is yep. there a, an intention to bring this to a larger market if possible? Well, yeah, I love that. So there's, we are getting to the point now, even just this year where we've been asking ourselves, you know, is there, is there ever a time where we can uh, realistically um, consider retail realistically consider distribution and in some respects we've already moved there like there's certain there's certain um avenues that we've been looking at to try to get our games into stores right. that's that's something we want to do and we have been doing uh more in a grassroots effort um yeah, right you now you can find a chip like, theory game in a store it's just not like a, a big project yeah yeah yeah. And it's, and it's also just like the margins are the biggest thing that we can't, you know, we, we tend to, because our games cost so much to make, it's very, very hard for us to get to the, to the margin that we need to, in order to make that worth it for us. Or if we did, it would slow down our growth so much that like we would, we'd almost be reliant on a Kickstarter for every single thing we did. And we're trying to get beyond that. We're trying to get to the point where we can take uh, a small amount that we've made from this and invested in the next thing without always needing, you know, that to drive everything. And the, the, the website sales have done that to a great degree and allowed us to kind of step up to the plate and have a new initiatives that, that don't have to be so reliant on the, the funding from crowd, uh, from Kickstarter or any kind of crowdfunding. That doesn't mean we're deviating from crowdfunding at all. Like we're, we're more into that than we ever have been, <laughs> but it's, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's our rate of growth. And if we were to steal all of that, because we are taking such a tiny, tiny margin, we just, it would, it would slow us down. So we're trying, we're trying a, a number of different things. Um, that said, you know, like this game specifically is again, extremely aggressive in terms of what we're putting in it. Um, and we're trying to be like, you know, where, where even previous iterations, you know, the console mat isn't absolutely needed, but it is in our mind, right. it's, it should be there and it should be there for that experience. The stadium seating isn't, we have chip trays that could be used for that, but it doesn't actually make the experience the best that it could be. And so like, we're just, we're kind of just trying to say yes to everything that that sparks uh, excitement for us, and that's how we that's try to that's how we try to do all our games, obviously. But um, but yeah, so that my answer is those kinds of decisions keep us out of distribution, right. unfortunately. Right. Um, and so our growth rate is a little bit in, in terms of people hearing about us is reliant on our on our crowdfunding, um, and then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Andrew Chesney has done a great job of making relationships with stores yeah. to allow us to get these games into them. Sure. Yeah, but very good points. Um, I think one of the things that um, Josh especially has really been an example of this, but as a company, we 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 don't say no to people. We always, we're always open to listening to ideas, you know, just, you know, business, you know, just reach out to us and uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but we, 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 keep, we try to keep an open mind on things from, you know, design to the way, you know, working with distribution retail, like you were saying, like we were open to trying it, but it's, the numbers still have to make sense for us, you know, mm -hmm. um, in terms of those margins. I mean, if you can imagine too many bounds now suddenly being $200, 
at, at your retail store. And that's, that's how I present the, you know, the, the conundrum, right? So you can, we can keep it at 1.30 on a web store, or we can just now suddenly adjust the pricing to cover the margins that we need to put it in re- retail. And that's just part of the issue. The other is the capital that we would need to, to place this massive order of bounds to fill the stores and, and anyways. So we like the slow, steady growth. It's been uh, a little bit more of a low risk approach. And uh, we, you know, we put our family, our, our, our office, our, our team, um, I don't want to say put them first, but we 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 want to. What are we prioritizing? Yeah, I, I got you. I get. Yeah, I think it's it, I mean, yeah. It keeps it a little bit more honest for us in just the, like here. Here is everything we can pack into this and still eke out something that is. And I, I'm not saying eking in out in the respect that we don't make any kind of margin. There's a margin to be made. It's what's allowed us to hire the the staff that we have, which has been a huge blessing. Um, like, like JW always says, uh, Gilly always says, you know, like we wouldn't be here without our backers and we, we, that's, it's, it's such a cliche, but true statement. And so, um, but yeah, I, it feels a little, it just feels really pure to be doing it this way. And so I just don't know how soon we'll get away from this model. Um, yeah, yeah. The way I, you know, the way I see, the way I see with you guys is that it's working for you. Yeah. Why? Right. If, it's, if it's broke, <laughs> right. if it's, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're growing, you're doing yeah. the, like you say, you get to do design. You don't have to actually go and stick lit chips, you know, labels on chips anymore. I assume. No, thank so, you. No more. Right. That. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, could you make a hundred million dollars if it went worldwide, you know, <laughs> in every store in the world, maybe, but you'd probably go crazy. Yeah. You know, and like you said, it's just this works, and, and yeah. it wouldn't be the same product. It wouldn't be the stadium seating, and it wouldn't be right. the other stuff. No, that, at, yeah. right. You'd probably have to cut out stuff. Yeah, just this. This and is. We're we're always faced with that. There's a lot of people out there that have said, "Hey, you know, I would buy this game if you just did a much more, you know, like realistic <laughs> version of it." And and we, I get that. Like that's a really good argument. It's just stuff. Just not how we're yeah. wired. Well. And, we apologize for it, but we also don't because right. it is who we are. And yeah. like, it's well, and, why, so like kind of like know, what you said, Kevin, it is working for us. And right. There's something yeah, I think, I think of that. kingdom death monster. They say the same thing. You know, they're yeah. not going to make a hundred dollar version. This is, this is their product. They're proud of it. They yeah. love what they make. And, and I mean, obviously we love what you do. So sure. <laughs> we don't sure. want you to change anything. Right. Sure. Okay. And yeah. so, I mean, in terms of, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, just uh, the final point on the whole retail. Um, rest assured, Victorian remastered, like none of that's going to hit, I don't know, I promise, but it's, it'll be a few years at least before we even consider any type of other avenue because um, Bones just now is being discussed uh, in that regard and it's already, the original is five years old. So mm-hmm. I, I just think that at least for the Victorian route. I don't want people waiting for retail <laughs> for that game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Okay. And so, okay, so we're, we're continuing the Kickstarter model. We're continuing the stuffing massive amounts of content into stuff. Um, <laughs> are we, is the Hoplomachus line going to continue? So then that, that that also helps people decide in terms of like, okay, I'm going to move on from the old stuff to the new stuff because the new stuff is going to continue and be right. it. So like, is that is right. that the intention? Yeah. So this has been a big question for us because we're taking a line that was already uh, expanded upon. Like this is, this is, we're taking and remastering uh, a, a set of three games and six to eight add-ons and extras and all of that stuff. And we're saying, all right, let's put this all back into a, a, a comprehensive but cohesive you know single box um so that is representing a number of add-ons and so i don't think initially we're going to try to make it much bigger than that sure. now that being said i think victorum is a whole nother story i think that could really really take off and and demand a lot of new content being developed for it and that would be our intent um i i think <laughs> It, certainly this we wouldn't enter into a game like this where well it's just for me it's hard to conceptualize a one-off product for us and how we work you know like if if, the, if, if 
if, if I think Triplock is the only one, right? Is, is well, Triplock yeah, the yeah. only one? I mean, we're, we're still small enough that if people want it and are asking for it, we're going to make it. Like, that's just how it goes for us. We're, yeah. we're, we're pretty nimble still, and we want to remain that way for as long as possible. So, but yeah, with the remastered stuff, I don't see us doing a whole lot more with that initially just because it's representing so much content already yeah. and that's all being kind of put into a box so yeah yeah that makes sense right. yeah i mean that's the answer that's a great answer it's like okay cool. are you getting expansions well you're getting like all this stuff in the PC. <laughs> <laughs> how why right. we asked my expansions yet so right. uh, okay i mean that's all my questions kevin did you have any uh, final thoughts uh, as we look yeah. forward to the launch of the kickstarter yeah, just what it's kind of off topic. I guess you said you're you're working on the design of Victorum now. Are, do you, are you still working on burn cycle design? Is that still ongoing, or, yeah. or is someone else working on that? <laughs> well, Shannon's been taking a lot of uh, that forward. So with burn, burn cycle, so Shannon and I, and and many others. I mean, there's just so many people here now that there that are speaking into these games that thankfully. When, when either of us stop to work on something, it doesn't like grind everything to a halt. So Shannon's been moving that forward in a huge way. And that has been and allowed me, especially just this last month, to kind of put my eyes back into a lot of the stuff that Adam's been working on with Victorum and say, all right, how do we want this to shape up as a Kickstarter? How do we want this to, you know, how like the presentation aspects and, and it's been nice to kind of get back on the same page and, and like, double check on if if it's remaining true to you know original hoplo but also taking it to those new uh new levels with with victorum so yeah i mean yeah uh, burn cycle we keep putting updates out it feels like we just finish an update on burn cycle and then we need to start preparing another one like a kickstarter <laughs> update and like we, we put a lot of effort into those and so um they they take a week or two to kind of plan and, and prepare for. So there's not a whole lot of time between them, but we're already sending files. I mean, we're already sending and prepping and sending files out and that's a stringed out, you know, staged uh, or incremental uh, release that we do to the manufacturer to get certain aspects, you know, worked on. And, and, but yeah, I mean, brass mag minis, all that stuff is coming in. Approvals are flying all around. So yeah, it's, it's very busy here with both Burn Cycle and Victorum, and now the starts of all these other projects from the Automaton of Shale uh, that we did at April Fools, which was, which, and, and other, other, other stuff coming <laughs> in the fall. So, yeah, but I mean, we have a team that can handle it now and that's, yeah. that's super exciting, so. Can I, can I ask another question, Jason? Yes, like sure. A... <laughs> so, uh, what have to... I done? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I should have thought forward kevin's gonna go crazy <laughs> well i don't get this chance off so absolutely it, it was obvious too many bones was gonna be a big hit right away i mean i think i kept bugging you guys when's it coming when's it coming because yeah. all you did was showed us like a couple of pictures <laughs> were you surprised at how big cloud spire what was how how well that was received because i even backed it i really didn't even understand what i was back and yeah, and it, it, it's I love it, and I, I see a lot of people talking about it. You know, I I am a little surprised. Like, certainly there was there like we don't go with an idea that doesn't have some magic to it, and and but but sometimes you're so close to it, you just really don't know if it's right. if it's your own passion driving you, or if there is really that, and if it's going to connect with everyone. Um, it, the theme plays so much into that, and, and I love another. I would say another aspect to Cloudspire is it's a lot to bite off. And, you, you know, usually our Cloudspire um, uh, fans or fanatics or whatever, like, you know, the people that are really sold out on the game um, come from after they've, they've gotten over that, that, that yeah. hump of really understanding what we're trying to do with the game. And I, I think that our, backers can be extremely understanding of how we develop because they know but anyone new to that they take this attitude and it's a it's a rightfully so like I, if I can't grasp this in a in a play session like it's not for me you know like I'm not it, I'm not going to take three plays to get an understanding of what this this is and and see the fun in it and so sometimes that that it, there's just a little bit bigger barrier to entry for for our games 
those that stick with them, I think the magic starts to come, you know, pretty quickly after that. But I, I yeah, it, it did surprise me how many are, because it's such a complex, initially complex game to get through. And then kind of like Bones, you start to see that, oh, this isn't as crazy. I mean, after you get through the reference sheet and understand it, now it feels very, very simple in how it's structured. Um, so yeah, I've been pleased with how it's been received, but a lot of that I will give to the remastering of, not remastering, but the re the renovation of the rules, you know, Shannon put a lot of time into that and others, uh, and Navarro came in and kind of facelifted the entire look and feel of the box and the, and the, Andrew the Navarro set up from fantasy flight games. Yep. So yep, we brought right. him in and he kind of helped us, uh, he championed that mm -hmm. overhaul. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and that's helpful Shannon, because yeah. again, it just making it more digestible, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, right. I think that has gone a long ways to helping yeah. people. Do do you like it? Do you have any idea if, if there are a lot of people playing it um, competitively, or is it almost all solo? Everything I've ever seen. Of course, I'm on solo forums a lot. It's that's what most people seem to be playing it. Yeah, like. that's a great question, Kevin. I we were getting into that with. I feel like two or three years ago, we were asking like, when are we gonna put some effort into um, tournaments and stuff like that at, at conventions? And when, you know, which games are we gonna focus on? And Cloudspire was one that was like really on my mind for that, for that. And then I feel like right about the time when we would have had a little bit of, of ability was you know pandemic and all the rest yeah. of it and it kind of mm -hmm. wiped out all of that discussion for a long mm -hmm. time because we so i don't know i like i i would love to to look at that harder um but yeah right now i don't think i have a very good bead on on like the different gaming groups that are you know yeah. be competing at any level on that i don't think there's a lot of that going on no it's yeah, all I think, solo and you know when yeah. when you when the kickstarter was up and i was i was almost thinking it was a two-player game that that could work solo and you know i backed it on faith but it i mean to me it's, it's i love playing it solo i mean yeah, just yeah I'll, I'll do mission over yeah. over and over and over again until i get it perfect and i move yeah. on to the next one <laughs> <laughs> look uh, what you did with those achievements you made <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that yep. that's a that's a big part that's come out is the solo solo side of it which is great so Chip Theory has grown from its humble origins where it needed $1,000 backer to, to now it's as 20, uh, 20 employees. It has a remastered. It's gone back into its old catalog and remastering and bring it into new stuff. We have the, the continuing too many bones. We have new products coming burn cycle. We have dot, dot, dot mm -hmm. that is coming in the fall. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have a home here on Shelf Stories. You have a home here on the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're a big family, you know, like with Rolling Solo yeah. and Ricky yeah. Royal. We all know each other. We all talk. We so all awesome. like we're, we, we, the, you, Chip 3 is definitely one of the companies that it's like, okay, you know, we're going to, you know, coordinate and talk about them and make sure we get as much uh, of the word out as possible. You guys are always in our year end episodes anyway for something. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. So uh, yeah. the, the uh, Kickstarter will launch. At you know, um, very shortly after this episode, uh, I yep. mean, it's coming soon. Like it's it is like like because Shannon uh, texted me and she's like, "It this is soon." Yeah, <laughs> we need, we're, yeah. this is happening. Uh, so I mean, that's and that's basically it. I mean, are there any uh, final words to for the backers or for the audience at large? Uh, just thank you. This was really fun to yeah. kind of. It, it's such a it, it's it's such a near and dear title for us that it's yeah. fun to talk about. And every time uh, we tend to talk way more. Just get long-winded just because of what it is. Oh, people so want 30 minute podcast. To, to you are in the wrong place for 30 minute <laughs> podcast. We are yeah. we want stories. We want to yeah, get yeah. elbow room. Adam is clearly passionate about the design, and you're you know talking about the design and the the wider yeah. uh, I mean, this is a, a home for passion. So absolutely. That's cool. Uh that's so cool. yeah, so so that's what's happening. Now, thank you very yeah. much for for tuning in. Uh gentlemen, the best of luck to you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Thanks, guys. Kevin, thank you yeah. so much for stepping up being my wingman. I know this was a pleasure for you. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. <laughs> but thank you so much as well for, for taking the time. Cool. All right. All right. So if you could change your mind, you could change the world. So until next time, <laughs> later, everybody. See ya. <laughs>